Hi there, welcome to Gong Show Garage. Today what we're going to do is we're going to do a video on how to maintain your lawnmower, your gas-powered lawnmower. Jesse from Clash of Clans asked us to do a video on it, so we're going to do it for him. This goes out to you, Jesse, and a few of our subscribers have actually asked us to do it as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little oil change, and I'll show you how to check the spark plug and all that. Now, this is my recipe. Everybody has a different approach. And everything that I drive, right from my dart, my lawnmower, my pressure washer, anything that I have gas, I put in some loop, uh, dirt loop. This protects the metal. I put this a little bit of this in. This protects the oil. I run synthetic oil. Or you can use Slick 50, one or the other. I don't use both of them. It's just whatever happens to be on sale, I happen to grab. But I like to protect the metals. So these two are great for protecting the metals. This keeps protects the oil. And this is synthetic oil. When you look at your lawnmower manual, it says it needs 30 weight oil. So this is an actual 30 weight. 5 weight just means it's good to a certain amount of degrees below zero. So if you're mowing your lawn and it's below zero, you got bigger issues. So don't worry about that number. But I've been doing this for years and all my equipment, I've never had a problem. But if you're not comfortable, stick with your manual and run the 30 weight oil. But I guarantee you, the synthetic oil is going to be way better. It'll keep your motor cooler. And it'll run a little bit smoother, believe it or not. So, anyway, enough about the ingredients. Now let's go back over here. This is a Craftsman uh, Briggs and Stratton engine. It's been a good mower. I, you know, it's rotting, rotting out. It's got some disadvantages to it. And one of the things I really don't like about this mower is they, they don't have bearings in the wheels. They have bushings. So if you saw in our earlier video, we've had to repair the bushings once already, and in this one here, I'm going to crawl underneath in a minute and try and point up and show you that a lot of lawnmowers usually have an oil pan uh, drain plug on it. And it's usually just a square nut. And you'll see it under there and you can undo that and drain the oil. But unfortunately, when they built these motors, they didn't do that. So we have to do it the Neanderthal way. We have to go through the dipstick tube, which makes a bit of a mess. But that's why we got the cardboard here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the dipstick. And you can see... That's how clean my oil is right now. You can barely, you can see it's on there. I've got enough. But if you change your oil every year, it should be that clean when you change it. So it is a little bit overkill. One other thing I really like to talk about is I deal with yard equipment for a living. And one of the major, major retailers now is bragging that their lawnmowers, you do not have to change the oil in them. So I kind of sat there and I talked to the rep for a little bit and I said, explain to me why you don't have to change the oil. So he goes to tell me about how the new air filter, it's like an automotive one, and this is on, I'm not mentioning the name of the mower, but on their, on their air filter, it does look like a car air filter and it goes on and it is nicely sealed. But he said, that's why they don't need to change the oil. And I said, well, if you know anything about automotive, 90% of the contaminants that are in your oil is from the fuel not from the air. So that doesn't hold water. So as I talked to him, and I kept badgering him, getting him into a corner, he finally admitted to me the reason that they're saying that is, well, they've done surveys and the vast majority of people don't change the oil in the motors anyway. So to me, that's kind of a lame duck. So if you go into any place and they tell you you do not have to change the oil on your mower, take heed to that, maybe pay attention to, to what he's saying, because I, I, I disagree with it. I think you should change your oil. Anyway, what we're going to do is this is a spark plug. We're going to take that out, and I've got a blaster that I'm just going to clean it up because I'm too cheap to replace it. And in the next part, we're going to crawl underneath and show you where that plug should be, but it's not on this mower. Now, because mine is self-propelled, there's a belt that comes in here that drives the wheels. So I've actually taken this whole guard right off when I reconditioned it in the other video. And I did check, there is actually no plug on the bottom of here, so nowhere under here is there actually a plug for draining the oil. So unfortunately, and I'm just, the spark plug's disconnected, so I'm going to move this so you can get a good view. All the way around, there is nowhere, no drain plug, which is absolutely crazy. Um, we did talk about it in one of our other videos, but I think we lost the footage. I put these blades on. These got tines up here and up here. So as the grass gets up into this top part here, which you've got to try and make sure you stay, keep clean because this is where the mulching actually happens. The blade cuts, lifts up, and gets it up inside of here. And these tines, you can buy them at a Home Depot, all kinds of different places, sell this blade. 
and they work really well. I actually have the original Craftsman blade that came on this thing that's never seen grass. That's how much I like these blades. I bought the lawnmower, went and got one of these blades right away. Anyway, we're going to go back up to the top, and we're going to tilt it over like a couple of crazy men and pour the oil out. That's why we got cardboard here, because it usually makes a little bit of a mess. And we'll just show you how we're going to do that part. Okay, so all I've done is just popped off the spark plug thing. I always try and make sure that it's clean. Some guys will put a little bit of dielectric grease in there just to protect it, and that just stops it from corroding. I'm going to put it on. My, most of them are the same size. I just use automotive ones. This one here happens to be a 13 16 just a little snap. Now, you should try and do it. Like it is a cast head, so it's not as big of a deal. But if you have an aluminum head, you always want to make sure you let it cool down first before you pull that out. Because you don't want to pull the threads right out of the head. Okay. So here's the spark plug. As you can see, it's pretty clean. But we're on a budget here at Gong Show Garage. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it in here. You can buy one of these at Princess Auto, it comes with a little bit of carbon sand, and you just hit the button, pull it out. So what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to hook up another hose to the compressor and I'm just going to blow it off because I don't want any of that sand grit shit going inside my mower. Okay, so now we've got it out of the cleaner, and as you can see it's 26 thou. that's the perfect gap. That's exactly what I gapped it to last time. You just want a slight bit of drag on the electrode and the ground. So what that ha that's where your spark is and that's what ignites your fuel. So you want to make sure that that whole area is clean. And like I said, you can do this with an emery cloth, any wire brush, whatever you want. Just as long as you get that contact clean. Thread it back in. You can tell a well maintained more, you can just do it with your fingers. Now you don't go crazy. You don't have to be a He-Man, just give it a nice little snug. And put the spark plug wire back on. There's that part done. Now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to check the air filter on this one. Every company does theirs a little bit differently. Mine has just got one little screw that holds it on. Pull it open, pull it off. This one needs to be replaced. So I will probably pick one up from work tomorrow. But if you're on a tight budget, you're doing it real quick because you've got to move the lawn tonight. Just give it some good taps. And never ever do this. And if you're going to do it, do it from the back. Because <laughs> if you do it too many times, you can actually damage the membrane of the, the paper. And then that'll allow the dirt in the motor. But I'm buying a new one tomorrow, so it's not that big of a deal. Put it back in. Okay. I'll do that screwdriver. How could I do with that screwdriver? Oh yeah, smart ass camera man. Okay, just tighten her back up. Like I said, I blow through it every so often, but that will be replaced tomorrow. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the assistance of our neighbor. He's going to tilt the mower over so we can drain the oil out of it. And he just printed this $100 bill, so we want to make sure we don't get anything on it. Okay, so I'm going to take out the dipstick. I'll give it a quick wipe down with a clean rag. As clean as it is, it is. And we're going to get our trusty neighbor with his big arms to tilt the machine over. So go for it. This could be a, a, a fail vid coming up. Keep going. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a fail vid. See, although on the dipstick it did look pretty clean, it is dirty. Can you push it over a little bit more? Now, what I usually do is I usually have a bungee cord and I let it sit if I'm doing it by myself. Just push it right over. So what I'm going to do now is just because I'm lazy.
in the back here where your plug is. Now it's going to be part, hard to see the light in there, but this area here where the plug sits. That's the quickest clear mower to rot out. Okay. Now if I can get my good assistant to flip her over for us here. But once or twice a year, I will use a pressure washer if it's a hot day, and I will use my pressure washer to wash that out. But as long as you keep blowing it out, or even wiping it out with a cloth or a brush, you want to make sure, like I said in the earlier video, you want to make sure that this stays dry. And don't let grass build up in here because it will rot out your deck, and that will take away your mulching action. So, as you can see, I... And in one of our other videos, we're going to show you how to take off the blade and sharpen it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to just take a little shot of the Lucas and a little shot of the Durlib. Not a lot, because you've got a very small crankcase. And just so you know, the Durlib is actually a synthetic oil. Just a little blob of that in there. This stuff's a little stickier, but... That's those two. Tech tip, turn your jug sideways. I didn't learn that until about five years ago. And we'll let it sit for a moment and then we're going to check the oil. Okay, what we did is we did add a little bit more. We checked it once already and it was a little bit low. As you can see, it's full on the dipstick. It's still draining down there a bit. Make sure your lawnmower is level. It is on a bit of an angle right now, but we did level it out before I double checked it. And you can see it's slightly over because it's on an angle, but you can see it's full. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift it off of here and show you it running. Okay, one other thing I'd like to talk to you about real quick. If you do happen to have an electric start mower, they have a battery in them. They do not recharge as the, bat as the mower is running, so you have to plug it in every so often. What comes with the lawnmower is usually something like this. As you can see, mine has never been used. It's because it comes with a different end plug. And the reason I don't use that on here is these things fry out batteries. They pump in, you know, 13 volts or whatever. And whether the battery can take it or not, it keeps slamming it in. And you see people leave it overnight or a couple of days and they come back and the battery's been boiling away. So I don't use that. What I did with ours is this plug on here. You can get not any automotive store. So what I did is I wired one onto here. I just checked the polarity with a set of meters. And I plug it in. And it lets me know that it's a little bit low. And it'll probably go to green pretty quick. It's analyzing it. And I'm actually running this off my solar system. So if the cameraman wants to walk in there, he'll follow the cord. And he'll show you that it's plugged into the solar system. So what I'll wait to do is, when this one starts, uh, it's already flashing, so it's saying it's at 80%. And when this goes solid, I unplug it and I leave it. Um, during the winter, I first couple of years, I did take the battery out, but this last year I didn't. And I pulled it out and my wife started it up right away. So we do take good care of the battery, but I do recommend unbolting that, taking the battery right out. It's not hard, it's just a couple of plugs. It's not really that big of a deal. Anyway, we'll get back to showing you how this thing runs in a minute. So thank you very much for watching Gong Show Garage. I hope this was a help to you. And if you uh, could hit like, I'd appreciate it. And if you want, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments section. If you disagree with anything that I put in here, please put it in the comments section. Remember, we're all here to help each other out to learn and get better. Have a great day, and thanks for watching Gong Show Garage. Alrighty, in closing, I'd just like to talk about fuels. 
make sure that you do use fresh fuel in your mowers, your weed eaters, and all that stuff. Carburetors from back in the day, they do not like to run on flat gas. And nowadays, gas doesn't last as long as it used to. Uh, it breaks down a lot sooner than it used to. Now they say it's for emission reasons and stuff like that. So I don't know the true story on it. You feel free to research it yourself. But what I would like to note is that when I went to Chevron the other day, I always run 94 on everything that I run just because of the fact that I just don't have fuel problems. And I like to keep it that way. I noticed on the pumps that it said that the lower octanes may contain ethanol methanol do your best to avoid anything that has ethanol methanol in any of your weed eaters and lawnmowers because it's not really good for the carburetors and the diaphragms and stuff like that that's in there so anyway i hope this is a help and i hope you have a great day